What is going on everyone? Thanks so much for tuning in. Much appreciated. My name is Justline and in this video we're going to go over null barriers in a special tutorial video. In Planet 2 we have plenty of different barriers but the null barrier may be a barrier for you that may cause some issues here and there. Maybe you don't really understand how they work. In this video I will try to go over the null barriers themselves go over a couple of ideas that you could use for your own zoo and how they operate in general and how to use them. So sit back, grab the pencil and notebook and we're going to go over all the things regarding null barriers. The first things first, a null barrier is a barrier that you can use in Planet Zoo for the enclosures for your animals. There are like many barriers. You have the physical one that you can actually see. But we already have the no barrier placed there. And that's like the barrier that you cannot see. And that's the cool thing about these barriers. If you open the barrier tab that you can see a yellow line appeared in screen. And that is actually the no barrier. The no barrier itself is a barrier that you can use to implement nature. But also buildings into your enclosure. And use those items for the actual barrier of the enclosure. So what I mean with that is if you don't want to have physical barriers all around your enclosure, you can opt to use these null barriers instead. They work exactly the same as normal ones. But once again, the only difference is that you cannot see them. That's the cool thing about it. Right then, so over here we have a little sort of test enclosure that we will be using for yeah, placement of the null barrier and like show one way how to use them. So in here we have the Alpine Ibex. This will be our test animal for this purpose. And as you can see, we have three sides covered with an actual physical barrier. And that is the, uh, the concrete one. But this side over here is completely open. So of course, we need to fix that because a couple reasons. One, if we would not fix that, we would not be able to place an animal in because the game thinks it's not a finished enclosure, which is actually true because at this very moment we haven't placed anything. And therefore, we can place a knob barrier. So you can like really see the difference here. I just made this real quick just to showcase what it could potentially be, for example. Um, like otherwise, we'll be able to place the concrete barrier in place like glass in that barrier and that's like one way to uh yeah watch and check out the animals that are inside the enclosure but for example you can also use a null barrier instead so as soon as you select it you'll see this blue line with a white dot on it that means that you selected it and you can just like treat this as any normal enclosure wall like an, an uh, enclosure barrier so what we do we're just going to be Continuing the enclosure as what we've done with the other walls. And then we're going to be finishing this up to the end. There we go. So as soon as we leave the barrier menu, the ball itself, the barrier is gone. Like it's in an invisible wall and therefore we're not able to see it. But if we select the barrier itself, then it shows that the barrier is ready. Or at least the enclosure is ready. And therefore, whenever you select it, the null barrier will reappear once again. But then there is one thing that to keep in mind. If we open the heat map, we're going to go to the habitat. And then select the e -bags. You can see there are a couple of areas where they can escape. That is one thing, or at least an important key, to keep in mind whenever you use a null barrier. You have to make sure that everything is still sealed off. As you can see, with all the rocks and the foliage, most of the spots are finished. I think we'll place a quick rock in here to get this going as well. Because of course, e-bags can jump and walk over this. So for test purposes, that should be it. So There we go, so that's fixed. But there's still one big gap that we have to seal off for the e -backs. Because the game itself doesn't keep in mind that the null barrier is a physical barrier, like the concrete one. And therefore, the animals can just walk over the barrier line in the game. Because this is the spot where the null barrier is placed. And therefore, we have to seal it off. And there are, of course, a couple ways we can do this. Uh, we can, one, maybe place some more rocks, like this. Or we can create some sort of a custom barrier. And that's the building aspect of this whole way of building. 
you can create a an own fence you can place a building you can of course continue with rocks and foliage that way it seems very natural and it's like one way to yeah like finish the enclosure off so we'll just create a very quick wall which is custom and then we're gonna place that in the line where the no barrier is and i'll be right back Okay, so I've made a little fence for the enclosure for the Alpine Ebex, as you can see. So the gap itself is filled now, therefore everything should be correctly placed. However, it's always very important to test after. So what we're going to be doing, once again, we're going to open the heat map and then select the Ebex with the habitat. And also make sure that the game is on pause so the map can actually uh, reconfigure. And uh, like there's still a couple of little sections open so at least areas where the e -bags could actually escape even though there is a fence placed there's one thing that we still have to do is if we open the barrier tab you can see that the barrier itself is still on the opposite side of the fence that we created so on the side where the e -bags can walk in so what we'll be doing is we're going to be selecting the barrier and make sure it's on the other side where the guests are if that makes sense I'm going to do the same here move that over so how it will work now is the ebex will first find the fence and then after so on this side there will be the null barrier so what's important about this is that uh, the e animal it doesn't matter if it's the ebex or another animal that's inside the enclosure uh, it first needs to hit a physical barrier so our physical barrier at this very moment is the fence that we created ourselves then afterwards it will be the no barrier because the fence that we created is um yeah like a barrier itself and therefore the e is not able to go through it and therefore it will not be able to cross the no barrier line so if we do open the heat map once again and then select the habitat and then click the e -bags. You can see that everything is in blue now and there are no error signs in the screen of areas where the e can escape. So for this instance, with the fence itself and the nature and rocks on the outside, it's all safe now. So the e can live freely and nicely and look-wise for us, the players, will be yeah more natural as what we have over here. So that's one way of doing it. There's also another quick disclaimer though. Every animal is different. One animal can jump, one animal can yeah, like only walk on land, etc. So this doesn't mean that this fence will be suitable for all animals. If an animal can jump, so for example, if you have a uh, orangutan, for example, inside this enclosure, and you have a, a climbing frame inside, it is possible that it could sort of jump over the fence. Uh, you need to change this accordingly to the animal that's inside the enclosure. Also, same with the rocks. It's highly possible that, for example, a lion can jump over these rocks because they're quite, you know, like shallow, kind of. They're close to the ground and therefore it could be possible that a lion could jump over this. One way to fix that is to place more rocks because that makes the surface of the rocks bigger and therefore more difficult for the animal for example the lion to jump over uh, but you can also for example make or place water therefore the jump is not possible and therefore you can create like a, a little water section in between where the fence is and where the lion for example is walking in so that's one thing to keep in mind whenever you create fences like this all right so next up we have another instance of using a no barrier with buildings attached to the enclosure so that's what we're going to show now i also want to still add something to the previous section of this tutorial about the materials that you use for the fences uh, we talked about for example a orangutan being able to jump over a fence it's also possible whenever you have building materials that you used for that custom fence whenever those are climbable ape-like animals will use them to climb over that fence so whenever you do create a custom fence make sure that you do not use climbable items for example if you create an enclosure for uh, the gorilla or the orangutan etc so do keep that in mind 
So for now though, we're going to be checking out a other method of using the null barriers with actual buildings attached to the enclosure. So what we have now, we switched the ebex over to a fallow there. Through the course of magic. There you go. So we have the uh, the fallow there inside the enclosure now instead of the ebex. And we placed a building right next to the enclosure and we changed the null barrier around a little bit. So it still follows the similar lines as before. And it goes like around. You can also open the barrier menu, of course. And then we have it on the outside and therefore it's completely safe for the fallow deer. So the way, or at least the reason why we created this is because the fallow deer accepts guests inside the habitat. So we can create a walkthrough enclosure. Normally you would use a guest gate for guests to be able to enter the enclosure. There is however a quick way, also fairly easy way, to still have a walkthrough habitat but then without the staff gate or at least the guest gate sorry for a more for example realistic view so if you have like a uh, an animal pet garden or enclosure whatever and you want to sort of feel uh, or make a realistic feeling and you don't want any gates to be in between the guest and the animals this is the way to do it so what we have now going to be passing the game uh, we're going to be finishing the enclosure itself so there's still a little gap where the door is where the guest can walk through so we're going to be attaching it as always the heat map and then the habitat icon if we select the fellow there we can quickly let the game run and then this is the blue screen or at least the traversable area for the fellow there which they can walk in as you can see, there is still an area in the door which is open because there's no physical barrier in between the enclosure and the outside world for the fellow there. So if we close the heat map, of course, you can still see like a big gap and therefore the fellow there is uh, able to escape through this door. There's like a little method to fix that. So what we do is the following may not be an item that you would expect but in the nature tab if you type in get rid of the filters elephant grass then you should see these ones for this instance we use the elephant grass four meter so it's like the biggest one out of the five so what we do is we hover over the area which is able to escape for with the fellow there which is the door we're going to be pressing the x button so we have this advanced moving tool appear we're going to toggle on the angle snap or with the space bar to get that going and we're going to press x once again so we have the circles appear so what we do is we're going to hold it and we're going to turn it upside down so that the roots are facing up very important we can press x once again and then we can move it a little bit over to here and then we're going to be sinking it into the ground like this and then lower it as much as you can and then as soon as it disappears from our view that's it don't do not make it any lower now you can either press the accept button to place it or just click somewhere on the screen that would work too and in this instance we're going to be placing two elephant grass items so what happens now it's not like a really intentional that it sort of is the way it is um but it is like a feature in the game it's no like bugs you don't need to install mods nothing but what will happen is because we place the elephant grass also upside down it still creates a area that will be impassable for the animals. So what that means is we created a area for the fellow there which they're not able to walk over. So for our point of view, we're not able to see the elephant grass because we lowered it into the ground, but it's still a barrier for the enclosure. So it's the kind of a uh, dull barrier 2.0. I think you can see it that way. So it's completely safe. 
The Valadir is not able to escape. And the guests are still able to walk inside the enclosure. So if these guests continue, and hopefully we're able to see that. Hopefully they will, for the sake of the tutorial, would be nice. There you go. <laughs> so as you can see, they can still walk over the elephant grass, because we placed it over here. And the guests are able to enter the enclosure without the habitat gate. There are a couple pros on this method, and that is one. The guest gate can only be placed on a path that's 4 meter. Especially in a crowded area, 4 meter will congest all the guests. This method, you can have a width of 10, if you would like, and then use the method as what we just did. So the guests can still walk freely. There are no bits and pieces which will interfere for the animals and or the guests. And it's completely safe and it doesn't cost a lot of money. So this way you can create sort of like a, a pet enclosure so the animals can kind of pet the animals that are inside. And it just looks you know, really open, sort of realistic in a way. And that should work as like a extra little uh, null barrier in a way. Okay, so we have another instance of what we could actually be doing with the method that we implemented just now. For example, if you do have a petting zoo or a zoo that's inside a forest, for example, and you would like to have some edibles free roam around their enclosure but also where the guests enter the zoo for example this is like a very small method to be implemented as well if you would like so we have a guest spawner in the corner of the enclosure and a entrance right in front of it and as you can see guests are actually spawning on the spawn section plus with the gate as well as you can see they just like go in the zoo they pay the price for entering as well and then right on they can check out the animals that are inside the enclosure so for example you can also make this bigger if you have more trees more rocks more nature around this whole area you can put like the null barriers all around as well and then make this like so much bigger so it's more forest like feeling just for the sake of this tutorial it's quite small but just to show that this is actually possible if you would like we still have like the, the other entrance in place, so it's not like super busy. Also something that you would maybe want to keep in mind, especially if you start small with a zoo. And also, again, with the method of having an entrance in the middle of a forest. Um, the fewer entrances you have, the more guests will spawn on the one entrance plate that there is. So also with congestion, etc., that may be in yeah, like something that will happen uh, whenever you start out. So this is just like a quick little thing that you could potentially be doing if you would uh, put like no barriers and the realistic feel of guests being able to enter the enclosure the way that we just did with the elephant grass. So neat little thing. Okay, so with all these methods covered in the video, I still want to show something uh, with all those methods combined into something that I've personally made in the zoo that we use whenever we stream on Twitch. So if you haven't already, leave a link in the description down below where we create all these things live. If you still have questions for, for example, the null barriers, but also other things Planet Zoo related, then feel free to tune in. I'll be happy to answer all the questions that you'll have and try to come out with a solution for the issue and yeah hopefully get things going better so what we have here is um a chinese palace all of this is actually on youtube as well as in speed build videos so all the buildings and placement etc uh, but this is the enclosure for the peafowl so we have two entrances inside this place this palace we have one over in this tower and then we have one over in the other tower right next to it but throughout the zoo, because we have, of course, like way more in the back, guests are also able to walk towards the peafowl from another entrance. So that's over here. So we zoom in a little bit. This is the, uh, the entrance. Or the outside, if you don't spawn in one of those entrances inside the enclosure. And the guests are able to freely 
walk inside. And then underneath, as you can see, we have elephant grass. And therefore, the p-files are not able to escape. So that's like one of the methods that we uh, used. So guests can just like walk in and out freely. Don't have to worry about any gates. And then from this moment, it is the enclosure for the p-file. Also like a little cinematic video on YouTube as well. I will link that in this one too. And just a quick overview. All of this is accessible for the guests, but also for the p-files. And it's pretty much the same for all of this. And if we zoom in and go through it, you can see spawn plate with a protester on it, uh, <laughs> an entrance. And under the other side, we have the exact same. And by the way, I leave the game on pause because otherwise it will be very laggy. So more for the smooth experience. So the same method over here. Barrier wise, we zoom out. I will need to glitch a little bit inside the wall because the entrance, there we go, should do it. So this one's for the PFL. We have the entrance for the staff members in here. So it's actually glitched inside the wall, but it goes around with a null barrier that is inside the wall itself, as you can see. So it goes all the way around. So that's the barrier for the game to recognize this as an enclosure. But of course, the p-files are not able to go through the actual wall. And therefore, it's completely safe for the p-files, but also for the guests that are checking uh, the enclosure out. And then we have the two entrances inside the enclosure. So whenever the guests enter the zoo through these um, yeah, spawners and entrances, they walk straight into the enclosure for the p-files. So as you can see, they do walk around this place and they can pretty much go wherever they want to go. Like there's no restriction as long as they don't, of course, hit the, uh, the wall on the outside and also the safe place in the beginning so that they're not able to cross this line because the elephant grass is placed. So with all the methods in the video, this is something that you uh, yeah, like can create in your own zoo as well. Maybe if you're like starting Planet Zoo, maybe not in the um, like way that it's shown in uh, the enclosure for the p-files. So with all the buildings, etc. And you don't have to make it like so big. You can also, you know, start small. That's all good. And also, for example, place rocks and trees. What we've also shown in the video, they'll work too. But this is like a method and an enclosure that you could do with all the methods shown in the video. With the showcase of the Indian p-file enclosure that concludes the tutorial on no barriers. If you still have any questions regarding this topic, then feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Also, the live stream link on Twitch will be in the description below as well. So if you do have questions and you want to ask them live whenever we stream on Twitch, do not hesitate, join in, get those questions going and we'll get the right answer for you. So for now, I want to thank you very much for tuning in. Much appreciated. Hopefully the tutorial helps. Once again, use the comment section down below if you still have questions. And hopefully I will see you all in a future video over here on YouTube. And otherwise in a future live stream over on Twitch. So once again, thanks so much for joining. I will see you all later. Stay safe. Happy building.